This is Optimal Finance Daily, Episode 270, Do Rich People Try Harder? by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com. And I'm your host and narrator of the program, Dan, and I'm here each Monday through Friday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. We save you the trouble of having to go out and find all the individual blog posts. We read them right here in podcast form for you. And if you have any topic requests or maybe an author you'd like to see us read here on the show, come visit oldpodcast.com and uh, share your ideas with us. And it's Friday, so like I like to do, I'm gonna keep this nice and short for you to end the week. But if you do enjoy the show, please do listen all the way through to the end. For now, let's hear today's post as we optimize your life. Do Rich People Try Harder? by Sam of FinancialSamurai.com After 10 years in the hyper-competitive world of finance when type A personalities dominate and type Z personalities fade, the one constant observation is that the most successful people all work harder than the rest. Take Bob, for example. He's probably worth at least 10 million bucks at the age of 50, but he still gets into work at 7 a.m. versus the norm of 8 a.m. and is the last to leave at 8.30 p.m. Nancy is the mother of two kids, and she comes in at 7 a.m. every day as well and almost always stays till 6.30. Is it a coincidence that both are the two most senior and successful people in the office? I say no. Contrast Bob and Nancy with Tim. Tim was a 24-year-old who could never come in on time, 8.15, and would always try to leave by 5 p.m. on the dot. He had no heart, and he felt entitled to reap the rewards without putting in the hard work. Does each generation always feel that the next generation is somewhat lazy? It seems that way. I think it's because the older generation feels that if the younger generation doesn't treat them like the older generation treated their seniors, then it's a slap in the face. Tim wasn't satisfied making six figures the first year and a half out of school and was let go. Sure, some people are more efficient, lucky, and are naturally gifted at their jobs. However, in the long run, there's one variable you can control in your career, and that's how hard you work. Remember that nerd in high school who just studied every night and got straight A's? Well, it's not a coincidence that he went to some top school afterwards and is a doctor at age 30 ready to make multiple six figures a year until forever. Give me a hard worker and a team player over a lazy star any day. Would you agree, readers? Best and easiest advice for career enhancement. Number one, get in first and leave last for at least the first year of employment. There's nothing a manager hates more than a staff that comes in after him or her. Seriously, the manager will start thinking, rightly or wrongly, how lazy you are and how so many other candidates would die to have your job. He'll reminisce about when he or she was younger and would always come in first and leave last. A tremendous amount of bitterness will build up before he or she blows you up in your review and ultimately puts you on the reduction in force list. If you're going to come in after your manager, you better also leave after your manager. Needless to say, don't come in last and leave first. Don't be lazy. Number two, identify who are the rising stars at your firm and latch on. The rising stars are apparent. The star is the one who gets along with everybody, senior or junior. The star could be the youngest VP promotion in the office. The star is going places and you want that star to pull you along. Just look within the senior management of your organization you'll notice that many of them started in the same departments together and have known each other for years. They take care of each other because they have trust in one another. They promote each other all along the way, and you need to get into that circle. Three, don't ever whine and don't be a prick. The second most annoying thing a manager or coworker hates is a whiner. When all one does is complain, it just starts to sound like blah, 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 I'm the greatest and deserve more. And after a while, your manager will just think to herself, If you don't like it here, then see you later. Whining is for losers. Just suck it up, accept your perceived misgivings, and find solutions to move forward. Good managers are actually more aware than you think. They know when there's injustice at times, and they hope their employees won't complain. When that employee doesn't complain and sucks it up, the manager's going to make it up to you one way or another. Four, manage up. Managing up is complicated. The Harvard Business Review has a great case study on this. Managing up is an art that must be carefully painted. The goal is to simply gain your manager's trust, provide your manager with information on productive work you're doing, and mostly to make your manager look good. If you can make your manager look good to his or her bosses, then you'll look good. Treat your manager as your client and always look to him or her for guidance. If you confide in your manager, you'll gain his or her trust. Never go around your manager to his boss. That's another sure way to be put on the RIF list. Number five, create your support web. Finally, sometimes being tight with your manager is not enough. 
Many organizations are consensus-driven when it comes to promotions and pay raises. I do strongly believe that 50% of your effort should be to sell yourself internally, and 50% is to sell yourself well to your clients. You can be the star salesperson, but if you have no backing internally, see you later. Conversely, you can be loved by everyone, but eventually when the downturn hits, you'll be at risk if you suck at your job. Getting put on the RIF list is as simple as one senior manager asking his junior manager, hey, junior manager, who do you think should be on the list? Well, bigger boss, Trina has been a pain in my ass for the past six months. Okay, junior manager, put her on the list. In downturns, those who have the smallest support network get fired first, even if they are solid performers. It's human nature to keep your friends. And when things get really bad, the bottom tier with great support will then follow due to the inevitable need to drive profits. At the end of the day, if you can do nothing else, just buy a money alarm clock and execute option number one flawlessly. The best quote of all is simply, the harder I work, the luckier I get. You just listened to the post titled, Do Rich People Try Harder? by Sam of financialsamurai.com. And if you would like to share what you think about this post, you can comment on it at oldpodcast.com or find the link to the original article there as well. And now before we head off for the weekend, uh, I wanna let you know that we could really use your support to help keep these podcasts, all the podcasts in our little family, alive and well. We've got a page set up at oldpodcast.com slash support that lists a bunch of really simple things that you can do to help us out and uh, to keep us going and thriving here. When you have a moment, please come by and check it out. We'd greatly appreciate it. Again, that's at oldpodcast.com slash support. And that's another successful week here at Optimal Finance Daily. I'll be back at you with more posts next week. So have a great weekend, everybody, and I'll catch you on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.